Hey, what's going on guys? Justin Williams back at you with another episode of Flint Napping 101 where we're sharing our tips and tricks. And today we're gonna actually be breaking down pressure flaking. So once you've actually got it broken down to a biface, then you begin pressure flaking it. And we'll talk to you about four different types of pressure flaking as well. So stick with me. All right, so on the last episode, we covered percussion and how to strike your stones to begin to break it down into a biface. Now I want to talk about how do you begin to process it and continue to take it to the next level whenever you go from a biface or a flake and begin to pressure flake it and turn it into something beautiful. Uh, great arrowhead. So, let's All right, so let's take a close-up look at some of the stones we got here and then also some of the pressure flakers. So here are several different types of stones. Everything as simple as a glass. These glasses you can also pressure flake. The flakes from the different aspects of the uh, Burlington that we processed earlier out of making percussion and making a biface earlier. And then there's also things like obsidian, beautiful obsidian, different other bifaces and aspects. And then you got slabs, which people can make and carve and shape in, and that's a good aspect too for pressure flaking. Then we have our pressure flakers. Make sure you have couple different sizes, one thinner, one thicker, and then you have your Ishi stick and an abrader, once again, another abrader for abrading the edges, but also a grinder for sharpening your pressure flakers. Pressure flakers, pressure flakers. All right, so when you get into the next level and once again, moving beyond percussion to pressure flaking, if you're starting a new complete stone, you want to make sure that it's as parallel and level as possible. Sometimes they get a little out of whack and you can still make some stone arrowheads out of those, but you definitely want to get them nice and flat. Or if you're working a biface before you get to pressure flaking, make sure it's nice and parallel as you begin to process it. The same goes with your slabs. Once you get these, if they're sawed, they're usually going to be beautiful and perfect for pressure flaking. So let's go ahead and I want to talk to you about four different methods for pressure flaking. All right, so the four different types of pressure flaking is one is doing it freehand. And this is what I like to do a lot of times is I'll literally make sure that I'm finding a platform just like percussion. You got to have a platform that needs to be below center line and I'm sticking the pressure flaker right on top of it and pushing in. And I'm just going down and hitting every little flake every little platform that's below center line. And they're just taking off small flakes and then you can flip it over and find some platforms here to begin to remove the flakes. Always removing below center line. All right, so that's the one technique is just freehand in your open arms. Another technique is on your leg. And some, some guys prefer pressure flaking on their leg. And they'll literally, once again, drive in finding platforms and removing them. So the next technique is to use what we call an Ishi stick. And once again, put this in your hand and you're actually taking this technique between your legs and removing lower platform stuff. Oh my goodness. All right, so we're gonna do some pressure flaking some, some of these others so you get a, maybe a better visual. That one's not putting, that other stone's not putting off a lot of good visuals. So. See about getting a better visual here for you. Let's begin removing flakes and do the other side.
So once again, we've talked about doing freehand pressure flaking, just up and closer to your chest. We talked about on your legs. Some people like to pressure flake from their legs. Some guys like to be able to do in between their legs with the Ishii stick. All right, and the fourth technique I wanna to talk to you comes from my buddy DC Waldorf. And once again, he actually particularly likes to pressure flake off of a tabletop. And so we could easily be pressure flaking and removing material from things like this obsidian. And by the biggest thing, once again, is make sure you braid, a braid, a braid, set up platforms, and then you can begin to set it on the table and begin to pressure flake it into different directions. And if you needed to, you could also begin to set up a platform by just doing uh, just short, simple abrasions. And what that'll do is it'll help set it up so you can drive longer flakes on the other side to help remove material. Taking light ones, remove them. A braid, a braid, a braid. Make sure that's preferably below center line. And then from there, once again, you just begin to use the table to begin to remove nice flakes. All right, the last thing I wanna to talk to you about real quickly, I'm not gonna spend a whole time and process this out because of time's sakes, but keeping in mind, if you're gonna get into slabs and processing them, definitely, definitely make sure that they are super abraded and ground so that way it's gonna take a good pressure flake. And then from there, you're gonna make sure there's different definitely different techniques and I highly encourage you guys to get online at youtube.com and type in uh, you know slabs and stuff like that and my buddy uh, not really buddy but a great guy out there uh, paleo man Jim's got some videos on this type of stuff too but you just want to make sure that you are processing it holding it and always striking below center line and I'll do a couple and then what I'm doing here too is I'm creating space in between them Get a couple of these in for us. At least do half a row. Everyone's below center line, putting off some nice little uh, pressure flakes. And that's where it begins to come beautiful. You do one side, do the other, and flip it over and begin to continue to keep processing it as you pressure flake it down, and it becomes beautiful. Well, guys, thanks for checking out another video on pressure flaking. Hopefully, you got some tips and tricks and ideas on how to process the stones once they start getting smaller. Once again, everything from glass to Burlington, some of my favorites, uh, and then different aspects, man. Um, there's several different things to keep in mind. Just make sure once again, you have a couple different size pressure flakers because a lot of that has to do with the different size of the stones that you're working with. And then you're also gonna keep that in mind for when it comes to notching, which we're gonna be talking about in the next video. So thanks again, guys, for checking it out and stay tuned for next time. I appreciate all your prayers and support for fighting my cancer each and every day. And I just want God to be the glory. So thanks again. Be sure to share and subscribe, guys. Hey guys, this is episode 8. We're going to be uh, doing some notching today. As you see, we got our fine points over here. We're going to be just grabbing our tools, our, our nice tools, and we're just going to be uh, digging into some rocks. So uh, stay tuned.